is Marion, and I'm here visiting Grandma Dismore in East Wenatchee. It's October 11th, 1984. Grandma, today maybe you could kind of tell me about the gospel coming to Chelan County and the early days of the gospel that you know of. <laughs> yes. That's what I'd like to hear anyway. So, yes, I could, I'd be glad to tell you if I can about how I first began to know about the gospel. Uh, I came to Wenatchee in 1910 and I was here visiting my sister, Mrs. Olive Fletcher, when uh, she uh, took me to visit uh, Mrs. Mr. and Mrs. MacArthur, who lived in the Indiana Valley, about two, two miles from where she lived. I had that was my first visit with any of the folks in the Indiana Valley after I got here to visit her, and uh, they were middle-aged people, and. Uh, he had been a Presbyterian minister and uh, for 20 years and uh, a well-educated man and and he had given up the ministry because of his health and uh, he had decided that he wouldn't go to the Presbyterian synods anymore because he was a little bit distressed with what was going on there that is that they he didn't just like all the things that uh, they uh, decided on and adopted and so on in, in the church, in the Presbyterian church. So he was quite uh, anxious about his own self and his own, uh, uh, because he had retired as a minister, he felt that he uh, was anxious to know what was right and uh, felt distressed about his condition. So he would go up into the hills and pray that the Lord would send him help. Well, of course, we didn't know anything of this in 1910, but the spring of 1911, two ministers, two men, got off of the boat in the, on the Columbia River boat at Antioch and went up to the Sunday school where this Mr. MacArthur was the superintendent at that time, and uh, they uh, went in and uh, to the Sunday school and was there uh, taking it all in and intending to in, to try and get a, the school for the mission, a mission that they wanted to have there. And uh, so after the Sunday school was over, uh, Mr. MacArthur said to them, what do you boys do? And uh, he, they said, uh, we are, uh, we preach a little. And uh, he said, well, then you take the morning service. So Jack Carroll was the older minister, so he he took that morning service. After the service, uh, he said, uh, where do you boys stay? And they said, why, we, have no, we haven't got a room yet. We have just come off, off the boat, and we haven't got a room yet. Uh, but they had announced their services. They wanted to have them there in the school. And uh, so he said, well, you come to my home and make your headquarters there. So they did that and uh, went, it was uh, Jack Carroll and Wren Silvernail. That was in April of 1911. And uh, I didn't hear anything of this until before I was, was going back to Wisconsin in the first of July, in the first of July, I had been here a year, and uh, I was going back to my folks and my place in Wisconsin. And and uh, before I left, I visited the MacArthur's again. We had become very good friends, and uh, often enjoyed a good visit together. And uh, so, while I was there visiting before I left, they told me about these two strange preachers and a good deal of what they had preached and the kind of lives they lived and, and all about the ministry as, as they had been uh, uh, living it. And uh, Mr. and Mrs. MacArthur were, were greatly impressed by it. And the only ones that listened in that two weeks of mission, and uh, it was really 
concern that it was the truth and the right way. And uh, so he wrote to Jack in May then afterwards and told them, him, uh, told Jack that he was, uh, uh, he could see that it was the right thing to not turn down the message they had brought to them. Now where was Jack and Wren still in the valley at this time? They, they had already gone. They, they had, had left the valley mm -hmm. and and gone to the coast. And his, in his letter to Jack telling him of his decision that it was right, he said he would like to see them and contact them in the summer when he would go over there on business in Seattle. Mm -hmm. So that was what happened. And um, So when then, they first came, Grandma, you didn't go to the mission then? Uh, no, I didn't get to any of that. I was teaching school up at the Brief District, clear up the last school in the, in the valley. The high up the farthest away from Antioch. So none of us mm -hmm. got to that mission. And uh, so we didn't ever get to hear. But, but I was impressed by what they told me in July of 1911 of what, 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 what these preachers taught them during the time that they were there. Mm -hmm. And I was greatly impressed with it. And so when I got back to Wisconsin, I told my mother and, and Dewey's folks uh, what I had heard about it, and that was all. I never expected to ever get in contact with it again. I never even asked, could I Could I ever get to mm -hmm. see them or hear them? So then uh, I went back to Wisconsin, all right, and, uh, and we decided to be married in August, and we were married August 24th, and about six weeks later we came back to Antioch Valley as Dewey wanted to come west. And my sister had gotten a school for him, but, which was a brand new district, and uh, and it was right across the road from where we were living at the time that the school was opened. Uh, during the, the time before the school was ready, uh, Dewey picked apples for, and did some other things around until I think the school didn't begin till about, or I really don't know just which, I could look it up in the diary, but I haven't looked at And um, so then, we lived there, and uh, he was teaching there, and in January then of 1912, just that many months later, just a few months later, why these two preachers came back to Antioch Valley, and um, they were at the MacArthur's. They were invited there, and they were at MacArthur's home, and he, Jack Carroll, came to the school where Dewey was teaching and invited the, the school, and Dewey to come to the mission which was going on up at the Gaines School which was about two miles farther up the valley and um, that was right close across the road and a little ways from where my sister lived so the mission was going on uh, uh, right away and uh, and so uh, they told us that if we didn't have any way to go that the MacArthur's would pick us up and take us to the mission so we went uh, to the to the first one was on a Friday night, uh, and uh, it was January tenth, nineteen twelve. And uh, Dewey wrote it in his diary. We went to hear the Irish preacher, mm -hmm. and uh, we didn't know what we were going to hear nor anything about what it was going to be like. But we went to hear the Irish preacher. Yeah, that was and, Jack Carroll mm, again. Jack and Carroll and Amor Leon, E I M A R L. I A N, mm -hmm. Amor Leon. Mm -hmm. He was the young worker. And then the very first night was on Friday night, the 10th of January, and I was greatly impressed in the very first words that I heard him say. And uh, for the whole meeting, I was I just felt like, well, this man knows what he's talking about. He's you know what, he he's speaking with authority. I didn't really say those words to myself, but that was the way I felt. And we invited them that night to come and visit us the next day, the next evening for supper. And they came on Saturday evening, and we visited and had supper, and it was a wonderful time. They were having the meetings five nights a week, and uh, we just told them that we'd try to come as often as we could, but we hadn't realized there was any need of trying to get them all. Mm -hmm. And so we uh, do, told them that Dewey would be busy some evenings, and we couldn't always go. So we, but we did go as often as we possibly could, and even on Sunday afternoon evening, 
Sunday evenings we would have uh, 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 go to the other meetings at the church so as to get back in time to be at the gospel meeting at 7.30, I suppose, at the school, the Gaines School in the Indian Valley. Now, what other church were you we attending? Were just at, we were attending the uh, Christian church in the edge of the cemetery at the uh, in the Indian Valley because there was no Baptist church. Dewey and I were both Baptists, and uh, the Christian church uh, doctrine and all was pretty much the same. They believed in immersion uh, baptism and uh, and practically the same uh, as we did in the Baptist church. So we were working with the church in Sunday school uh, really <coughs> pell-mell. Dewey was just elected superintendent of the Sunday school and uh, we uh, did uh, everything we could to help out. And we had organized a Christian Endeavor Society and also a uh, uh, teacher's training uh, program that we got the literature from the publishing company where they got the church literature and uh, David C. Cook Publishing Company and uh, we uh, <coughs> this training uh, program was we had the books and literature as to and we would met early on Sunday evening or I don't remember just which night a week and um, we would uh, study these this on how to become better teachers of Sunday school classes mm -hmm. and so on and um, and that had just been like well it well started and everything and um, so uh, but we kept going to the mission and uh, just very very much interested in it didn't want to miss any at all if we could possibly help it now and did they have quite a few going to the gospel meeting they the, the, the church the the school was full at first. Everybody was standing. Uh, that was full to almost a, uh, you know, no more room hardly in the school. All of the district turned out for this uh, mission, and they were very interesting preachers. And uh, was very. Uh, we just felt like it was just something wonderful because our eyes were being opened continually to the the things that were being said that was revealing to us what the true ministry of Jesus really is. Mm -hmm. Now, do you, do you, excuse me for yes, interrupting, but um, do you, um, did you take any of the older children at all or We were with you? brand new married Oh, people. that's right, you would uh -huh. be. Yeah, we were just married a few months. That's right. <clears throat> From August 24th till the 10th of January when we January. began. January, uh -huh. that's right. Uh -huh. Yeah, so and, you wouldn't have, you've been really young in the community oh, and yes. young in the... Uh, I had been here for a year and going to that yeah. same church in Sunday mm -hmm. school, but Dewey, you see, didn't come. We arrived after our way, after we were married mm -hmm. uh, in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. uh, we arrived the 3rd of October. And so, you see, uh, uh, he was new to the camp. But he had been a real organizer in, in Wisconsin. They had, uh, had a, uh, an organization of uh, a, a Sunday school organization. Uh, in Wisconsin that Dewey had helped to organize and five Sunday schools among of all the districts around would come together and have one or two meetings a year for these different Sunday schools. So he had been busy in those things and as well as teaching in Wisconsin. And uh, so it was uh, not surprising that he entered in. We both were very much interested in church work and I had been the clerk of the church in Wisconsin where uh, I had lived up until I was married, until I came to Washington, and, and uh, so I was familiar with a lot of the goings-on of church and Sunday school and so on. And so we... So were, that was, was that a very long mission then, or could they stay right it on? It was six, six weeks. Six weeks. Six weeks mission. Mm -hmm. And uh, in about two or three weeks, <laughs> Why, uh, uh, of hearing after I should have looked up in the diary when it was that we went to the Sunday school the last day. We finally decided that the way they were teaching was the right way and so we decided to to just sever our connection with the church and Sunday school and, 
had gone in the way that they, that they were teaching us. And Mr. Carroll, we asked him, uh, well, what do you do after you leave this place? What do you do? Do you, uh, uh, we're used to going to, to church about three, at least three times a week. Yeah. And uh, what, uh, what do you do with the people that believe as you say that, as you are teaching? And they told us then that there would be meetings in the home for us. Mm -hmm. So the, the meetings in the home began at the end of the, of the mission. And uh, uh, we were living with Lou Dinkelman, who had, his wife had died the spring in April, the year of the first mission mm -hmm. in 1911. His wife had died, and uh, and uh, <clears throat> he needed somebody to live with him. And he, he had asked my sister if perhaps Dewey and I wouldn't like to come and live, and I could do the cooking for his mm -hmm. orchard crew and mm -hmm. and uh, help in that way. And and so we didn't. Ha we were footloose yeah. then at, to that time. So we we went there, and that was where we were living when the mission began. Mm -hmm. And uh, and. Uh, so he taught the rest of that year in that school. Did you profess there then that first mission? Yes. After? Yeah. But one of the first things that they asked us after uh, he was preaching a while was, I wonder how many people in this meeting, in this congregation, would be willing to follow Jesus no matter what it means or costs. And uh, everyone, all of the church people, everyone that uh, were uh, church members and so on, They'd, they all said they would, they would stand or hold up their hand. Mm -hmm. And so we did that, and Mr. Carroll in, asked that question two or three different times later on, so we really never felt until the very end that, what, that we had really made a definite choice, mm -hmm. you see, to follow Jesus. That really, it wasn't to go, go into a different way mm -hmm. or to, uh, uh, it wasn't to organize a new church or anything of that sort. It was clear outside of all the denominations mm -hmm. and everything uh, because uh, it, it, we were not taught to believe in a different church but or a different denomination mm -hmm. but we were taught that it that if we were true Christians we would be those who would follow Jesus no matter what it meant or cost mm -hmm. and uh, we were introduced to what it meant to be followers of Jesus because the, every mish, every meeting was <clears throat> from the scriptures and uh, definitely. And he used to say sometimes, now don't take my word for this. When you go home, you look this up in the scriptures and find out for yourself whether these things were so. And uh, we would do that. We'd often, when we'd get home, we'd mm -hmm. look it up and then we'd keep reading on because we'd find more and more opening up to us. And so... That must have been a big shock then to the so other community, it, the, the religious community well, it there. Was, it was just a, it was and Grandpa. A, yes, and then then this Mr. and Mrs. MacArthur, who uh, had, he had been praying mm -hmm. for help, uh, he'd found the help that he needed. And so at, before this mission was closed, he made an open confession, an open stand. He also made his choice. Oh, he did. And so we were all of just one mind then from then on, you see. Those of us who, there were about 10 or 12. I was going to say, mm -hmm. now who did mm -hmm. profess actually mm -hmm. openly in that mm -hmm. first mission? Mm -hmm. MacArthur's. Well, Mr. and Mrs. MacArthur, my sister Mrs. Fletcher, Dewey and I, Mr. and Mrs. Al Bortz, <coughs> and, um, and um, there was a Mr. and Mrs. Finley, but they didn't go on. Mm -hmm. And um, Lou Dinkelman, oh, Lou Dinkelman, mm -hmm. and Mrs. Small, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I think there was about ten of us all together, and then we began to meet together Sunday mornings. And so Where did you have your first The first meeting, meeting, I think, was in the Bortz's house. Mm -hmm. uh, he didn't establish in any one house for a while, oh. and then it, it began to be in the... It was in one or two homes, and then finally settled into uh, other. Then that summer, we moved to Chelan. Oh, you did? Or to Lakeside. Lakeside oh. was a separate town. Mm -hmm. And uh, the this, this superintendent encouraged Dewey to get the 
Lakeside School. It was a it was a three room school, and um, they wanted. She said the principal was leaving, and and they would want a new teacher. And she encouraged him to get that school. So in August, we moved up there oh. to the. So that would have been August of nineteen twelve. Twelve. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, and were there friends up there at all? No. Well, the, there in the as after Mr. Carroll left and and Amor left the Antioch Valley, they went straight to Chelan. Oh. And then they went out to the boy the Union Valley and tried to get that school, and the the uh, people out there, uh, the man that was on the school board, Mr. Spake, said that they were already having meetings and uh, in the school, and, they, and he didn't want to let them didn't want to change, he mm -hmm. said. So they went across to the Boyd District, and there they missed Mr. and Mrs. Uh, uh, Will Eisenhart. Oh. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And uh, they, uh, there's a nice story about how they, uh, they met them on the road, and they were on the way to Chelan, Mr. and Mrs. Will Eisenhart. And um, he, uh, he, they stopped and talked to them. It was with a team, you know. Mm -hmm. He said, uh, uh, "He said we want to get the school," and uh, he said, and Mr. Eisenhart was on the school. He said, "When do you want to start?" And he said, "Tonight." And then oh, he yeah. said, "Where are you going to stay?" And they said, "We haven't found it. We have no place yet." And he said, "Will you go to my home?" So they went on to their church meeting, whatever it was—the Methodist or something was going on that they went to, and uh, they told him, "My hard man." Is there, and he'll see to it that you get something to eat and a, pla and a place to sleep. So they did that, and that was the beginning of the gospel in Boyd District. Then a little later, then later than that, they got a chance to have meetings at Union Valley, mm -hmm. and uh, at the Boyd District, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Eisenhart, Will Eisenhart, and Mr. and Mrs. Noah. Elmer and Letty Noy, and Mr. and Mrs. Spake, and Mr. and Mrs. Steele, Horace Steele, uh, uh, were the ones that professed out, that out there and were willing for the gospel. And then they started meetings out there. And then uh, the Union Valley people had a meeting. And uh, then after we moved up there, on the 24th of August, on our first wedding anniversary, we were moving into a house there in Lakeside. And, um, and um, so uh, uh, the, uh, Jack Carroll's two sisters, uh, Fanny and May and Flo Davison, were having a mission in Chelan at that time in the recreation hall. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> as they, uh, uh, so we walked over to Chelan to all the meetings. And there was, had been, there was one home where we met for a Sunday morning meeting. Mm -hmm. And uh, then uh, uh, we, of course, we were very, very happy to meet the girls, the sister workers and all, and, uh, and went to, walked over to Chelan for the, all the rest of the meetings for the rest of that year until sometime. Uh, well, all the all, all the rest of the time while we were in in uh, Chelan, there was no meetings ever in Lakeside. Mm -hmm. I mean, no home opened yeah. up for meetings except ours, mm -hmm. and uh, they'd have a union meeting at our place sometimes. Oh yeah. Uh huh. But the first union meeting we went to was out at, in the Boyd District, out at Will Eisenhart's. And uh, we went. Mr. Mr. Eisenhart was uh, uh, was buying a car from Dr. Mitchell, and uh, he was driving it out on Saturday afternoon. And uh, Dewey and I and May Carroll rode with them in that car. And Will Eisenhart had never driven a car before, but he he uh, <coughs> uh, he drove the little narrow dirt road out to his home in Boyd District, and uh, we drove along, rode along with him, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that, uh, that we stayed overnight, and the next day they had a union meeting of the, the Boyd District and the uh, people in Lakes, in Chelan, and 
and uh, the uh, Union Valley folks, and uh, that was a wonderful day. <laughs> it would have been. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to say that uh, Dr. Mitchell was in the car, in the front seat with Mr. Eisenhart while we drove out to the Union Valley in that first car ride out there. <laughs> On the 10th of no, I, I, dear, I went wrong. It's <laughs> okay. What we were just going through some, some other facts mm -hmm. in the diary and so forth, and Grandma wants to add some things here. Uh, the workers, Jack Carroll and others, uh, made arrangements that we would have a special meeting in Chelan in the JAR Hall in November. <clears throat> so. Uh, on the 10th of November, 1912, there was a special meeting in that hall, and the churches from around, I, I really can't remember too much about how who all came, but there was quite a little crowd that came together. And Jack and his companion and May Carroll and the others, and I, I believe that Edith Hansen and Grace Douglas uh, and Fanny and the others were all at that meeting. I can't remember too well how many were there of the workers, but it was a wonderful day in our very first special meeting in Chelan, November 10th, 1912. We lived in Lakeside until the spring of 1914, and uh, while in the on the third of day of January, Mr. Steele brought his team and uh, rig down to us, and Dewey and I took Grace Douglas and Flo and um, Fanny Carroll and Flo Davison and Jenny Douglas up to Manson. And uh, while the Grace. Grace and Fanny were going to try to get a, a school and a place to preach in Manson, but Flo and Jenny planned to go to First Creek, and so we saw them get in the boat, Flo and Jenny, to go over to First Creek. On the way, there was a heavy snowstorm, and they lo we lost sight of them before they got to the other side of the lake. Flo and Jenny then went up to Mrs. Barron's, uh, to the Barons' home, and uh, and they they got the school and had a mission in First Creek, and it was there that the Leslies, the two Leslie sisters, or sisters-in-law, mm -hmm. heard the gospel, and the Barretts, mm -hmm. and I don't know who else, mm -hmm. and um, so they had a meeting finally afterwards in in First Creek, but uh, Fanny and and Grace. Uh, I had a mission, but there was only about one person that I know of that uh, that professed at the time, and I don't know how much of a meeting they had there. But later on, then, I remember one s Sunday afternoon when the, the first time that all of the First Creek people came down to Chelan together and came into the meeting, and they, that was the first day that we saw the Leslies and the Barretts and them come in to, to the, the girls that arranged for a Sunday afternoon meeting. Mm -hmm. And so that was uh, a wonderful thing when uh, there's been a lot of wonderful things happened because of the mission in First Creek and also uh, in Chelan and other places, though the Manson, there wasn't so much came of that mm -hmm. we know of. Um, then after this, Grandma, then what happened after, um, when you were in Lakeside for a while? You uh, we went back to Wisconsin in the spring of 14, and uh, Dewey's grandmother died that in, in May after we got mm -hmm. there. We went to help take care of her. Mm -hmm. And before the before the next year of that spring of 1915, uh, in spite of all of the feelings and 
that Dewey's father and the other's father especially would never, uh, never believe in it as we did. Uh, there was he and, and, and Dewey's mother and brothers and sisters and sisters-in-law and brothers-in-law. There was 13 of us meeting in Aunt Martha's living room by the spring of 1914. Or, fif- or no, no, 15. 15. Uh-huh. And, so his, his mother did profess Oh, yes, oh, yes. Before. Uh-huh. Oh, and and they, they all, about the 1st of January of 1914, or I mean 15, mm-hmm. they were, were all coming in. <laughs> mm-hmm. Some had before that, and my mother had professed before that. Mm-hmm. So, do, you know, do you know who they heard the work through back there? Oh, well, yes, because uh, while we, it was while we were there that year that, uh, oh. that uh, mm-hmm. the workers came mm-hmm. and uh, preached to them after we'd lived there with them till, mm-hmm. from... Uh, the spring until the winter, and uh, and some of them had already professed even before the workers ever came, as to us. But then, of course, we waited for them to make it. Uh, yes, and some just almost immediately it, at the beginning of the new year, fourteen, uh, fifteen, mm-hmm. and um, <clears throat> then the workers that came were Rose Lurch and Eleanor Stever. And uh, they held missions around in the neighborhood and around, and and uh, that the folks got a chance to make their choice. And then uh, uh, in the spring of 1915, uh, late spring, I think it must have been May or June, uh, the workers came for a special meeting in there, in that neighborhood, came right there to the Dismore families, and... and uh, uh, most of them were baptized. Uh, Jim Jardine and uh, James Patrick were the workers that came and uh, baptized them. And, oh, mm-hmm. that's interesting. Uh-huh. Jim Jardine. Uh-huh. And James Patrick. And it was wonderful. It was wonderful, those special meetings. And people came from other districts around where the gospel had already been preached in, in, in Wisconsin there, around in Ohm from Cam- Cameron and Canton and other places and so that there was quite a gathering there for a special meeting mm-hmm. when the folks were baptized. Most of the people in your family professed then too, didn't they? Well, no, no, not, no, no, not Did your yet. Sis- your brothers and sisters either? You see no one but, but Olive here. Olive, uh-huh, uh-huh. just here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh-huh. But, but uh, it wasn't too long by the next year by the before my sister Emma mm-hmm. Blackburn mm-hmm. decided and uh, but she never had a mission and uh, really mm-hmm. and she she decided uh, through a letter oh. you know uh-huh. mm-hmm. so how about grandpa's brothers and sisters oh they none of them none of them none of them and all on that other side of the his brothers families not any of them have ever been willing for it. They were real religious people, quite religious, all of them. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but then we would have the workers, of course, would come back to the Antioch Valley. After we came back in April of 1916, uh, the uh, there were uh, the workers before that. The workers had come and for special meetings and things up through that time. For, uh, from the time that we first professed, and uh, so uh, uh, we <clears throat> and, and but but we never had any more missions in in the Chelan or or Antioch Valley or any more missions until George Wicks came. I don't think there was ever. And he only had scattered meetings here and there, and um, <clears throat> and um, uh, then in the the in the I I learned this this last winter very definitely that George Wicks 
left New Zealand in 1922, January 1922, and came to Washington. And he came soon to around, and he was in the Chelan and uh, Ediad area and Wenatchee and all. And by that time, I, there were churches uh, in the different places in Wenatchee and all. So that uh, definitely that was at the time when they came to the... And then after that, then 23, Mabel Sill and Mabel Pryor came and had mission oh. in, in the in the Andiat School, in the Gaines School again, mm -hmm. where, same school where we professed mm -hmm. in 1912. 1910. 12. 12. Mm-hmm. 12. So... And that was 19... That would have been 1922, you said? Mm-hmm. Mabel and... 23. After. 23. You've got it going? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mabel Pryor and... Mabel Sill and Mabel, Mabel Pryor. Pryor. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Came and had the mission mm -hmm. in the Gaines School again, and that was when several professed and mm -hmm. added to the Etiat mm -hmm. Church. So that we, well, it wasn't very long we had two meetings in in uh, yeah, yeah. Antioch. And then <clears throat> later on, others came uh, right along. So we had different missions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that really, uh, we had many missions in the Antioch Valley and in the Antioch, town of Antioch and in Chelan and all since since the, that time so there's been at one time at one union meeting in the Andiat Valley there were 80 people hmm. there were three churches in the Andiat Valley but uh, mm -hmm. people children grew up and moved away and mm -hmm. soon the, there wasn't so many and so now <laughs> do you think that compares with Juno mm-hmm uh -huh. Three meetings there, and and there's about eighty people when they get all together mm -hmm. right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But that's with children and mm -hmm. everything. Yeah, that was was so children. You see, the mission was preached up at uh, Brief in '32, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that was when the signs is professed, oh. and uh, oh. our. They asked us, we had the meeting in our, Sunday morning meeting in our home, and uh, they asked us to uh, go up to Brief and meet with the new church in uh, 32 in the, mm -hmm. Martin Sines' home. And uh, th their family of five and our family of six made quite a meeting of just children. There were th and uh, and to some other children, too. Mm -hmm. So uh, then we had quite a meeting there. And soon the roundies and others. I was just going to say, was that we're done, done again? Later on, later, later on. on. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. And it was, we had quite a quite a meeting there. Would that be Edna Cannon? Well, that Edna Cannon, then? in the meantime, had professed, and she was only 13 years old at the time, oh. and, and when the girls were holding a mission in the Vaughn School oh. up at the Andiat Valley. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 